Hey guys, um, just make sure you uh, like and subscribe at the bottom. Leave any uh, comments if you uh, have anything you'd like me to go over in the future. Um, so today I'd like to talk about, you know, like physical physical symptoms of anxiety and some of the ones that I've experienced and things that I've I've learned from them and then uh, things that I've, I've been able to use to um, overcome them or experience them and them not be a big deal. So now uh, a couple of books I would suggest reading, uh, Self Help for Your Nerves by Claire Weeks, At Last a Life by Paul David, and then uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. So Self Help for Your Nerves is what it's going to do is it's going to help you understand conditioning and the nervous system and um, how your, your body has, or your, your body and mind have, have put yourself through um, some of the things that have got to you to where you're at with a lot of those physical symptoms and help you understand that um, they don't necessarily mean anything. Sometimes things just happen for no reason because of being sensitized. Um, at Last of Life is going to be able to help you understand a lot of physical symptoms and <clears throat> why they're there and why um, you should experience them or feel them um, in order to get through them or understand them or be able to um, use them as a tool for learning. Um, and then a man's search for meaning is going to help you understand what the, the durability of a human mind and body, what they're able to experience and to what degree and be able to overcome and be able to really um, really be able to um, handle anything you know we're super adaptable in, in any situation and we can find any way to to live or survive so <clears throat> some of the excuse me, my allergies are terrible but some of the ones uh, the, the the ones that I've really experienced um, headaches really bad headaches pressure in my eyes my ears I've had pain in my groin um, I've had stomach cramps uh, tingling in my hands. I've had panic attacks. I've had seizures, like panic attack seizures. Um, um, palms really, really sweaty. Uh, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, uh, my throat has been really like, it felt like I couldn't breathe, like someone was like hurting my throat almost. Um, back of my neck, a lot of pain. Like it feels like someone was just pulling me backwards. Um, I've had energy levels be so high, I feel like I'm gonna just shoot shoot to the moon like I'm just like just almost freaking out it's like you know very difficult to handle and I felt like I was gonna vomit constantly for weeks before um, I've had ringing in my ears a couple times uh, very small amounts nothing super crazy but um, it, it I've definitely had it a couple times um, and I would say those are those are the, the main ones so the first thing is why 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 these feelings why do they happen okay so uh, what, you, you, what you've got to understand is, you know, you have likely put yourself in that situation of having a lot of those things happen with the physical sensations because you, you're, you're wound up because of your anxiety. Your nervous system is so wound up all the time. Your adrenaline's constantly going and you're exhausted and your body's trying to figure out a way to repair itself and the problem that happens is people try to avoid these um, sensations they really try to make them stop and that's what the the issue is you once you experience them and feel them to the fullest over time your mind will not have the ability to or body make them happen and let them bug you even if you experience them you'll be able to continue and push on and move forward and also it'll make it so they have a lot less of a bite right and the other thing is, is it needs to happen. Your, your mind has, and body have this amazing way of healing itself. And part of the healing process is allowing yourself to feel those feelings. For example, when a lion chases a gazelle and the gazelle runs away from the lion and escapes, when they're done, in, in some situations, they almost shake and they freak out like they're having a a panic attack right because they've just experienced a fight or flight life or death situation but the gazelle doesn't have the ability to think about their thinking about thinking about their thinking so they don't analyze and process it so there's nothing wrong with it right so the problem with us is we try to fix it we try to find a way to make it stop we analyze it we try to make it make sense and the reality of it is is 
the more you try, the more it will happen. You have to just allow yourself to feel all of those feelings and those sensations. And over time, they'll slowly start to bother you less and less and less. And you have to understand that they have to happen. They need to happen. They should happen. And they're a learning experience. And if you just let them happen, you'll not have them to the degree that you're having them. Now, the other thing that you have to run into with the physical sensations is fear of fear. For me, I know a lot about fear of fear because my theme was very surrounded by fear of fear. And what's driving a lot of these physical sensations is fear of fear. Afraid of them being around all the time, you not being able to function and them causing problems in your daily life. Um, so what you have to do is break down those feelings. Like, for example, for me, this pain in my neck that I used to have was so bad. I mean, it was like, I mean, it, it made it hard to function. I felt like my neck was going to like break. Like I would sit there, watch TV and I just felt like someone was pulling me backwards and I kept trying to fight it, and figure it out and understand it. And, you know, and, and, and eventually when I was really able to look at it and, and experience it and then I broke it down I was like okay so worst case scenario I have this feeling in my neck 24 7 365 what happens what's the worst thing can happen I wake up I make breakfast I have coffee I go to work hang out with my friends I do all the same stuff I normally do because that's what I normally do anyways right you know like I just bring it for the ride that's what I've, I've done for so long but the problem was my mind was jumping to these conclusions of gloom and doom and oh gosh I'm gonna be stuck like this forever well the reality of it is is if I was stuck like that forever I would be doing exactly what I was already doing which wasn't bad at all it was actually just my normal daily life which is great I love my life so once I was able to break those things down and look at all of those things and see what the fear was what was the, the prime fear which was fear of fear of all of those sensations when it comes to physical sensations if I ever have them they don't really stick or if they do come up, they stick for a short time and a new sensation sometimes will try to emerge, right? Because OCD is tricky, anxiety is tricky. It tries to find a new way to get in there, to get under it. But it's all the same principle, right? So with physical sensations, the biggest thing you got to understand is why, why is it happening, right? Those books will give you the explanation. So you can educate yourself on the physical symptoms, the body, the nervous system, and the mind, okay? You'll be able to understand why you need to experience them and how it allows your mind and body to heal itself and then last but not least um, using rebt rational motive behavioral therapy which um, how to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable about anything will teach you how to use scientific method to break down the individual fears to what they really are so you can realize they're not a big deal like oh my gosh i have physical stomach cramps and it hurts so bad and it gives me diarrhea and maybe makes me throw up which at the time we're, we're kind of freaking out about it right we're nervous about it right but over time we see that it's not a big deal okay so um anyways hope this helps um it's great talking to everybody hope you guys have a great day